Welcome everyone to this week's episode. It's fantastic to have you here. We're going to dive into this topic of how to embrace yourself fully. This has been a personal journey that I'm, I feel like I'm always on because as I grow and learn new skills, I am consistently updating how much I love myself and how much I fully support and embrace who I am. I think one of the reasons that we stop embracing who we are is because of external influences. There was someone or something in our life, a moment that showed us that it wasn't safe to be who we are. And so we internalize that and immediately shut it down. We sweep it under the rug. We bury it. So we label it. That part of us is too loud, too sloppy, too weird, too quiet, too timid, too whatever, and never to be seen again. And as a result, we go through our lives when we fragment, we cut down little pieces of ourselves like that. Every time someone or something says, you shouldn't be like that, we label it as bad, we put a part of us away. And there's this idea that I have of just like this consistent trail of our lives that we've been walking, our path, that just continuously has little fragments of us. Little broken pieces of us have been falling like breadcrumbs. And here we are. And our jobs are to, I really mean this, our jobs are to go back and collect, to stand at some point as a whole sovereign being. And at that moment, when you can stand as a whole sovereign being, after you've collected as much as you can of yourself, And loved the crap out of those pieces. Love is the glue that puts us all back together. Then at that that moment, we have these breakthroughs of sunlight coming through the cloud. when We are fully able to embrace who we are. It's not about what other people think of us. It's about what we think of us. That is the metronome that's measuring how much you can fully embrace who you are. When we are using other people's reactions about us, when we're using other people's judgment of us to measure our worth, we will never come close to embracing ourselves. This is really important to understand. And I was there. I was there. I always wanted to be validated. As an only child, it was really important that People reacted positively to me because I was the center of attention. And being the center of attention, there's a lot of pressure there. And also being brought up, told that you can do whatever you want to do, that has a shadow side to it as well because I can't always do everything I want to do. I should instead be doing the things I meant to be doing, the right things, not all the things, but the right things. And so, When we're consistently using someone else's reaction, praise, um, influence, ideas uh, to to guide us toward ourselves, that's a moving goalpost. And that's really exhausting because as soon as we figure out who we are based on someone else's reaction or someone else's opinion of us, that'll change. And then we've lost sight of who we are, what felt like solid ground, and because we understood who we were in relationship to other people, it shifted. And then suddenly we are not standing on solid ground anymore. The bottom comes out and we're no longer able to access our confidence. We're no longer accessing our confidence. We're no longer accessing our intelligence. We're no longer accessing self-love. And that's a very shadowy, dirty, gross place to be, isn't it? And it's really because we have forgotten how to embrace who we are. We have forgotten how to love every part of us. Somewhere along the way, external gratification, external feedback became more important than internal feedback. And everyone's been there. I've been there too. And I'm still in the process of going back and reclaiming. In fact, it's a daily practice. 
And even sometimes when you think you've got it, you think you've really gone back and you think you've really reclaimed some part of your creativity or your voice or your power or your artistry, there's just a little moment that can rock you and you're like, whoops, I guess I didn't have that fully embodied yet. Okay, let me go back to being gentle with myself. That's exciting feedback. All that means is I get to go back and practice the skills again. So let me ask you right here, you guys, what are your embodiment practices? Do you have embodiment practices? I know I'm talking to a bunch of energetic goddesses right now. So of course you do, but where could you ramp it up? Where could you put a little more coals in the fireplace to get more power out of it? Because some of you are one or two embodiment practices a week away from a huge revelation and huge breakthrough. Some of you are one to two embodiment practices a week away from totally reclaiming who you are. And that's for real. As soon as I started to realize that everything I desired was one, already inside of me, and two, the the tools to mine it out, to reclaim it, were in my energy practice, I hit the acceleration, the gas pedal on my practices, and it is all I do now. Every moment I have is an energy practice. Even if I'm doing something like this, you might think that this is not an energy practice. It is an external facing practice. But right now, I am present. I am co creating with Source. I am co creating with my business. She's present. Source is present. And I'm sitting within my temple, completely saturated in love for you and love for what is coming out of my mouth. This isn't scripted. This isn't scripted. I have one little post it note with the today's topic on it how to embrace yourself fully and i hit record and go right this is this is me loving myself in the process and not trying to get it perfect not worrying about the perfection but instead focused on loving myself and accepting and embracing myself fully in this now moment i got here because of energy practices. My camera is a little bit fuzzy. Okay, there we go. If you're watching the um, the video on YouTube, I just had to refocus it real quick. So let's talk about that. There are practices you're going to do when no one's looking. Energy practices such as your meditation, breath work, Radical rituals. If you're inside of any of my containers, you know what ratty, ratty rits are. You know what the radical rituals are. What about energy practices such as combining your mantra, your breath work with the recitation of sound, of sacred syllables? Maybe there is time in nature that you do. But above all, these are your practices you'll do, let's say, in private. And then there's practices you'll do out in public, meaning this example that I'm doing right now. No one's around right now, but I know this is public facing at some point as soon as I publish it. So I know that there's other people on the receiving side of this. This is a moment still where I am practicing being present in my body, focused on communication through the channel of love and the communication of loving myself as well, loving the sound of my voice, loving my body, loving my posture, loving how my breath and body are combining to produce sound, being grateful for this moment of the technology that's around me right now to create this, being grateful for this time that I have to create this because I've made solid decisions in my life on being a full-time entrepreneur, doing this for real, doing this all the time and never stopping. Those choices gave me this time, this sacred time. And this is how I'm choosing to use my time in the channel of love for myself and for you. And so even though this isn't a practice behind closed doors, this is a practice of being here fully now, embracing everything I am. And so thinking this way will get you to understand that every moment is an opportunity to practice. Every moment is an opportunity to practice sacred connection and fully embracing yourself. So goddess, knowing this, What's one little thing you can do today? 
to knock on the doors of gratitude for yourself, to knock on the door of loving yourself fully, embracing yourself. What's one way you can celebrate who you are? And you can do that behind closed doors with some mirror work. You can journal to yourself. You can write a love letter to yourself. You can go for walks out in nature and sing and dance. You can start to journal a little bit more about what you're going to do future state and get excited for the things that lie ahead. All through the channel of loving yourself, respecting yourself, and embracing who you are. Because the truth of the matter is this. You are unique. You are sovereign, and there's no one like you on this planet. There's no one who can think like you, talk like you, walk like you, design like you, be like you, laugh like you. Everything you do is so unique and so special. And we need more of you in your wholeness and in your realness. This is going to take time to slowly adjust to the act, the devotion, really, of going back and reclaiming because we were told it wasn't wanted. We were told it was too much, told it was scary. So there is going to be a lot of wound work there. There is going to be a lot of energy work. And it doesn't happen overnight, okay? But this is the work. This is the beautiful work that we get to do every single day of going back, reclaiming with that sacred yes in our in our fiery holy spirit that we can and need to reclaim. And as we do, every little piece of ourselves gets us closer and closer to fully embracing ourselves. Okay. Love you guys so much. Thank you again for being here and I'll see you next week.